Macomb, a small village located in Northwest Ohio. If you're from Macomb, or you know the area, you would know football is taken very seriously, and in the fall, family, friends, and students all come to Doc Miller Field to support Panther football as these athletes play their hearts out under those Friday night lights. Since 1998, an important individual, the head coach, has helped lead Macomb to many accomplishments, including eight Blanchard Valley Conference titles and one Division VII state title. His name? Coach Chris Algy. From a young age, Chris Algy grew to love sports. He always had a ball in his hand, whether it be a basketball, football, or baseball. He played multiple sports at Arlington High School, graduating in 1982. Algy went on to play football at the University of Findlay, where he was the quarterback and punter. After his years as an oiler, he tried out for the National Football League. And in 1986, the Cleveland Browns signed Algy but due to injuries, he was unable to continue with them. Fast forward to 1987, Algy was signed by the Philadelphia Eagles and was with them for two and a half weeks until he was cut. But Algy's love for football didn't stop. He decided to get a teaching degree so he could have a better chance at coaching high school football. He began his coaching career as an assistant at Van Buren High School until 1989. In 1990, Algy became an assistant coach at Macomb High School until 1998 when he was named the head coach of the Macomb Panthers, where he has been since, leading the team to many victories. Why do you think you're so successful? I think it starts, you know, growing up and, and coming from a town um, of Arlington where they really stressed winning and, and I had good coaches that were successful good programs that were successful. I went on to coach or went to Finley College and under Dick Strom, um, he was successful. Uh, then went on to Van Buren with, with Don Masters. Um, he was successful and then, then you had Bill Banning who, you know, they won state here. So I think if you, when you put yourself around successful people, you learn, you know, how to win, how to be successful. But, you know, growing up too, and even, even coaching, I realized that you have to have good players and you have to have good coaches. If, if you have one or the other, it doesn't mean you're gonna have a successful program. But, uh, you know, our philosophy has always been, my good players are gonna equal out your good players. It's what you do with the other 12 or 14 kids or 15 kids on your team. If we can take those average kids or not so good football players when they're freshmen, get them in the weight room, develop them, and make them better, then we feel we're gonna have a, a pretty good football team. Over the years, Algie has coached many talented players. Craig Ackerman was one of those who later down the road coached in the NFL and is currently an assistant with the Tennessee Titans. I guess some of my better experiences and my favorite experiences with Coach Algie had to be early on in my career um, as an eighth grader. <clears throat> uh, coach Algie was a new coach for us. He came over from Van Buren and uh, it was interesting, we were gonna play a, a big game against Liberty Benton, and uh, he basically drew up a play in the dirt for us to open up our game. Um, and in fact, I can remember this uh, like it was yesterday, if you can believe that. Uh, the play was called slot right, flanker left, tight end streak. And that was our very first play we ran against Liberty Benton in my eighth grade year, and it went for a touchdown. And I always thought that was just awesome of a coach to go and do that. And, you know, obviously we hadn't practiced it, but we went in there and executed it. Him having the confidence of us doing that was was great. Uh, another great experience that I had with him was when he was our freshman basketball coach. And uh, just us having a great time on away trips um, where he would be the uh, coach slash chaperone for us on the buses and, and just having a good time uh, back then. And him just talking to us about his experiences that he had whether it was at high school, whether it was at college, when he was trying out uh, to be a professional player in the NFL, uh, just hearing the, the stories from Coach Algie and, and listening to him talk about his experiences, obviously that was a big part 
um, of my life because I always remembered it. And then obviously I got a chance to coach in the NFL, which, which has been great. So uh, those right now, those are kind of the experiences that stand out to me on Coach Algy. Obviously he's done an unbelievable job there um, record-wise at Macomb, um, winning a state championship. Uh, but what I really am proud of is the way um, his former players uh, talk about him. Um, you know, everyone has a Coach Algy story. Um, and the more older you get, the more you understand relationships, um, people that help you mentor you along the way. Uh, is obviously a big deal. So um, I always love listening to guys tell stories about Coach Algy. Over the years, Algy has had many accomplishments coaching football. He has been named Coach of the Year 10 times, has led Macomb to eight BBC titles with four state football playoff Final Four appearances, and the biggest of them all, the Division Seven state title in 2018. You know, after we beat, um... Fort Laramie in the final four it was just such a amazing feeling because we had been close you know th three times before that and we came up short triple overtime to you know Marion local in, in 2012 and we were short in 2015 and 16 where we, we, we thought we were going to get to that championship game and and uh, that was one of the best feelings afterwards and, and it was it was such a relief uh, it was joy, but it was relief knowing, hey, we finally did it, you know, and and going into the week and just seeing the excitement in the community. I mean, I was not around for 83, you know, when, when Macomb went to state, I was in college, and, and but I know it brought back a lot of good memories for some of the older people that went through the 83, and, and they were just, you know, the, the school was so excited, the teachers, the, the community. And just the support we got from the people was just, you know, unbelievable, especially when we had the pep rally. I think I'll always remember that, the pep rally before we left to get on the bus. And, you know, when asked about taking, you know, Greyhounds, and I said, no, you know, we're going to take the school bus because we want people to know we're from Macomb when we show up in, in Canton Stadium. And, uh, you know, we went about our business. I mean, and it was the most uh, focus I think I've ever seen our team the night before. When we were watching film, um, they had us in a room, and the coaches and the players were watching film. We were eating, and, and they were so focused, you know, the whole week. And you could really tell, you know, the kids the kids wanted to win it, not only for themselves, you know, or their team, but for the community. And I remember Jerry Mapes giving a speech, and Steve Davis gave a speech, and, and um, uh, there were some other players that, that talked to the team. You know, before we left, and, and I knew after Jerry Mapes talked, you know, that I mean, I was ready to put on my uniform and go play. I mean, he had us so pumped up, and, and uh, you know, the game is weird, you know, 10 in the morning um, or, or 10 30, I can't remember now, but it, early in the morning, I, you know, it was sort of dark, so I said, hey, it's just like a night game to us because it's still dark out. And uh, I think when Tanner broke that first touchdown, it was just like things are going to be good. On December 1, 2018, the Macomb Panthers won the Division 7 state title at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium in Canton, defeating Gloucester Tremble 28-3. Just, just coming back, I mean, after the win, it was, it was just unbelievable feeling and, and because of the work that the coaches, the players, and our AD put in, you know, Mr. Wolf did a tremendous job with rooms and, and organizing all the, you know, behind the scene things. And, and uh, but I know they had the police escort and we came in and saw all the fire trucks and, and the town just standing outside and, and the, the people from around Macomb too. It just gives you that uh, euphoria you can't, you can't explain. You know, and I think that's sometimes as coaches, you, you want that again. You know, you want, these other kids experience that you know the 83 team wanted this team to experience that and, and they were glad for the kids because uh you know we were close before and it never happened but uh yeah something i'll never forget and, and something you always hope and work to maybe get that chance again so everybody in my family is girls other than my dad so we have 
he has four daughters, so no sons. Um, so his football players have become his kids. Same with basketball um, and track as well. But we all like get together as a family, go to his games, support him. So it just kind of brings everybody together. And even though none of us play really sports at all, um, he gets to have that through his football players. And I think that's a really great way for him to connect with them um, and be kind of a role model in their lives as well. Same with us though. Chris Algie's coaching and teaching at Macomb has impacted both athletes and students by encouraging them to be better individuals and to work hard on and off the field. One thing that I learned from Coach Algy is that you can't coach effort. He stresses that to you whenever you practice, whenever you're lifting, and that's what I learned from him back in high school, and that's something I always carry with myself every day. So some of my favorite memories about Coach Algy is uh, out at practice for football, we'd be out there probably three or four hours sometimes because he always wanted us to uh, really get things down and he knew how well we could do it and he wouldn't let us leave until we had done really good and uh, he also he liked to be the scout team quarterback and he'd always burn our defense because he could still throw so that was I don't know we had a couple long practices where guys weren't doing what they should have done and uh, we'd end up being out there till th like seven o'clock some nights and uh, some of my favorite memories. All right, so Coach Algie and the Macomb program has really brought me to become a better person on and off the field by showing me leadership, um, showing me that no matter what situation you get put into, you put your mind, your heart, and you get together with your brothers that anything can be and will be accomplished the way you want it to be. And if not, always look forward to the next win, the next game, and the next day that you get to live up with your brothers. Chris Algie will no doubt go down as a legendary coach for Macomb football, and all his accomplishments will continue to be remembered for many years to come.